Chatting with uh, the voice of rugby league, Rabsy Ray Warren. G'day, Ray. How you going? I'm doing okay, mate. That's good, mate. Yet another dark cloud over rugby league with all the betting scandal. When are these players going to learn? Just, just it's like to drink. If you don't drink and you don't bet, you can't be in trouble. Some players have been wiped out for the whole season. Yeah, look, I, I, I must admit that I think you'll find a lot of this uh, inquiry has revealed insignificant bets, really. But the, the major thing, of course, is the principle. The principle is that everybody knew from the players right through to the officials of the clubs that they are not allowed to bet on to bet on football. Um, the dumbness of the whole thing is that some of these players were betting on accounts registered in their own names. So they didn't give it much thought. Uh, of course, the stench or the smell over all of this uh, goes way back to are they backing the opposition to beat the team that they play for? Uh, and that's, that's the prime mover in all of this. I don't think it's um, a mountain. I think it's more of a molehill, but it's it's better to get at the disease before it becomes a mountain, put it that yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. One of the finest coaches that in my lifetime I'll probably ever see is uh, Wayne Bennett. Yesterday he announced that he was leaving the Newcastle Knights. Unfortunately, he didn't get the results that he was after, and he said it's going to take whoever comes in after him at least five years to get Newcastle to do anything. Is the club in that much disarray? Oh, well, you know... The- the, the drama, of course, that, that they've gone through with Tinkler, um, the Alex McKinnon thing hasn't helped them. They've got the personnel there and they've got a wonderful junior competition around them. I, five years, that, that sounds like a reasonable idea. Penrith, for instance, uh, Gus Gould and Ivan Cleary, they've always said that they're on a five-year mission. That's how long it was going to take to revive Penrith. But I would have thought that Newcastle are starting from a little bit in front of where Penrith were as far as talent's concerned. Losing Bennett will be a yeah that that'll be that'll be difficult. But I think the former coach Rick Stone, I think he might just slot back in where he was. To be honest with you, um, and it's a funny thing about Newcastle, but I, there seems to be always a, a place for the, for the local. As much as they might have befriended Wayne Bennett, I think uh, it's a job that a local entity really gets the job done better. I think because he understands the the culture, he understands the people. There's going to be a team in Newcastle. That's all we have to worry about, and. That's supported by the NRL. They'll find a coach and, and they'll, they'll be OK. There's no yeah. drama. And the team will be loved as well. Uh, do you know where he's going to go, your mail? Is he going to St George, maybe the Broncos? I think it comes down to Broncos and St George, but I don't know whether the Broncos are going to be able to handle him because Anthony Griffin, he's got uh, a contract that I think has got maybe two years to run. So I don't think the Broncos could afford to pay him out, to be honest with you. The only way he would go to the Broncos would be to become a coaching director. The other reason for him to going to, go to the Broncos would be that he'd be going home uh, to his wife and kids, and he's got, as you know, he's got a disabled child. If you ask me who the favourites are, probably the Dragons. Maybe they're the favourites. Although I, I just can't imagine Wayne Bennett going back over old territory. But um, you ask me a question, I, I'd probably say, yeah, he'll go... If he goes anywhere at all, he'll go back to the to the Dragons. In recent times, the Cronulla Sharks, the rugby league headlines for all the wrong reasons, but you look at their on-field performance. Last week against the uh, the Roosters, and the Roosters pretty much had their, their full program of players, which took out the, the 2013 Premiership, and they had a lot of players coming up from the New South Wales Cup. I even heard one player come up for the Ron Massey Cup. No coach, no Paul Gallen, and yet they pulled out one of the most courageous wins I've ever seen on a rugby league field. Yeah, everything you say is right. And the only thing that uh, that I can possibly say would be negative, and, and, and that is uh, something I don't like to talk about, but the fact is that I think sometimes these, these clubs and the Roosters is a, a very, very good example of what I'm about to say. They seem to drop their game. They, they take their eye off the ball against the weaker teams, the Roosters. If you remember correctly, at the start of this year, they beat Parramatta by about 50 and then they play them again about three or four weeks later, and Parramatta beat them. They tend to take their eye off the ball, the Roosters. I still think they're going to be in the grand final, but when they play the big matches, when they play the big matches, they switch on. That, that, that is a negative, I suppose, for Cronulla, but I'm happy for them. I really am. There's a light at the end of the tunnel for Cronulla, if, if you know as, as much as I do about the development down there both the apartments and the shopping centre. There's a lot of money coming to Cronulla down the track. Yes, yeah, certainly, mate. It's always great to chat with you. We'll chat with you same time next week. Absolutely. The voice of rugby league there, Ray.